Yo E, I just turned 24 years old a few months ago. Since that day, it seems my life is just crumbling, falling apart. Although during autumn, I started doing jujitsu, and now it seems as though I cannot stick with it. I started my master's degree in sports, and now it seems I have to stop because I don't want to or need to study. But I feel bad about myself. I still live with my father and mother, and it seems we're having conflicts anytime we talk. I feel anger towards my dad because he did not believe in the king transformation, semen retention, sexual energy transmutation, and how it uh, has destroyed my masculinity. I try to explain it to him. I've totally destroyed my self-esteem and my confidence. I've tried explaining to my mother that porn and masturbation for 12 years excessively has destroyed my soccer career. But it seems they're tired of hearing it. <laughs> but I have so much emotions buckled in me that I just want to shout. I have to throw my phone at the wall and break it. Also, computers and headphones. My parents think I'm schizophrenic because of my anger outburst. I feel about myself. I feel about myself since I turned 24. Everything is falling apart. E, please reply. It would mean a lot to me. So. Um, the very first thing I would do is I got to not necessarily side with, but empathize with your parents, right? Uh, sort of put myself in their shoes because in a lot of ways I am in their shoes because I am a parent. And I could just imagine that if my 24-year-old son was still at home and he quit his job and he can't stick to a sport and he's uh, quit school and he feels bad about himself and then he comes to me talking about uh, sexual energy, semen retention, and how blowing my load for 12 years watching porn was a bad idea, I would pretty much say, okay, and what? What are you going to do now? If you were my son and you came to me this way, I'd be like, okay, good. Great insight, buddy. Stop jerking off. But what are you going to do now? As parents, look, they. I could imagine that they're in some way grateful that you're giving up a particular vice. Now, I don't know if you're blaming them or blaming anybody, but the fact is that I would imagine that it's in their eyes a good idea that you're not jerking off the porn anymore, right? Maybe it did destroy your career. Maybe it did make your self-esteem go down. Maybe so on and so forth, your life isn't great as a result of it. But what now? That would really be the question. Okay, great, wonderful insight. What are you doing? That's what, I, that's what I would say. That's, what, that's my attitude, right? So I'm kind of taking on your parents' attitude, right? I know you're asking me a question. You want me to take your side, but I'm going to start by taking your parents' side and seeing it from their, from their view, right? All, all this talk, right? All this talk. Oh, but I discovered semen retention. And I'm not jerking off anymore. Congratulations. What are you doing, my son? So with the understanding that age 24 is a critical... Uh, initiation season into your life, I would understand and I would pose to you to understand and have patience with the fact that you're not going to know exactly what you're going to be doing over the course of the next 12 years. You're being initiated into a new cycle, 12 years. I talk about this often. The first three, four years of that cycle between age 24 and 27-ish, uh, you're not supposed to know exactly what you're doing. You'll have no idea where you're going. But it requires that you remain vigilant, eyes open, aware, paying attention, noticing, allowing, letting revelation guide your steps. What do I mean by that? It's a good time to start journaling. The reason why journaling is good for you at this stage in your life when there seems to be so much darkness is because when you are objective in your description of what is and you step back, when I say objective, I mean literally just write down what is, not what you feel about it. This is important. In this way of journaling, I'm going to, I'm going to encourage you and I'm going to encourage all of you. This is really, this is powerful stuff. Not to journal about what you feel. This is what a lot of people do. This happened and I felt this about it. It's more of an internal journaling. Nothing wrong with calling yourself to an account every day, which means, you know, take a look at, take a look at the inner life, you know, I, where I maybe have had excessive lust or I had inner turmoil. I was challenged in some particular way. I was tempted by Satan. All the things that happened on the inside, well, those are important, but those are fleeting. Well, what's happening on the outside is a 
sort of a signpost. It's sort of an in indication as to what's happening uh, globally, what's happening spiritually, what's being presented to you in your life. The only way things are presented to you in your life is when you see it, right? Unless you're like Abraham and God is literally talking to Abraham or Jesus and God is talking to Jesus, right? There are times when Abraham is literally having a conversation with God. But if you notice his son, Isaac, has no conversations with God. We're reading about Isaac and Rebecca right now. Isaac acts on faith without having to hear. He doesn't need God to talk to him. He just pays attention to what is and acts in faith. And so a lot of times, listen, between age 24 and 27, you're sort of in that, that phase where God's not going to talk to you so much. Things are going on behind the scenes. The best way for you to gain a foothold on what is and where you're going, once again, is to just observe the objective world. Take notes on what happened today. Literally just the facts, right? This is a new way of journaling for you guys or a way that many people have never heard that's going to give you insights into what is in your life. Let me talk a little bit about the, the, the difference between what will happen if you journal with objectivity or if you journal with subjectivity. If you journal about what is versus journaling about what you want or what you feel and the benefit thereof. So first of all, my encouraging you to journal is a way for you to step back from your life and get the helicopter's viewpoint of where you are, where you're going, and what may be unfolding, right? Helicopter, that's what objective means. It means the helicopter viewpoint. It means I'm pulling myself up out of the mire, out of the muck, and I'm looking from on high. Oh, okay, right? And so when you're looking from on high, all you're doing is seeing what is. You're not judging what is, you have no opinions about what is, you have no feelings about what is, you're not trying to change what is, you're just looking at, well, this is what it is. Journaling from that objective viewpoint gives you, allows you to have more detached clarity about what's going to unfold in your life. Because you really have no idea, so using any kind of thoughts trusting your feelings or intuition, all these things will only distract you and lead you astray. So if you're, so for, for contrast now, journaling from feeling, journaling from thoughts, journaling from uh, emotion and desire, right? Is like standing so close to the tree that you can't see the forest, right? Helicopter view, standing close to the tree. So someone, who, someone who's operating from the subjective place, journaling from the subjective place, is just feeling, oh, there's just this tree in front of me. All I see is this tree, and I want to see more trees. In fact, I don't even like this tree. I want to see different kinds of trees, but I'm sad and I'm depressed because I'm staring at the bark of this brown tree, and I would much rather see one with fruit and leaves. You got to be like, hey, dude, slap me. You got to slap him. You're like, hey, dude. You're too close. You're too involved. You're too attached. You're too subjective about this. Get over yourself. Get out of your way. Stand up, look around, and just notice. Just notice. That's such a powerful statement that I think goes over our head. The power of just noticing. Just notice. And as you notice, the reason why, I, and I'll tell you why, the reason why you journal you journal so that you can, in retrospect, look back and see the steps that took you along a journey, even though you were blind, to where you are today. Guarantee you in the next three years, if you, if you start taking this objective perspective on your life and start journaling from an objective place, within the next three years, you're going to look back and whether your life is good or your life sucks, you're going to see what happened along the way to get you there? What happens when you perceive your life from an objective viewpoint? You can make changes uh, without judging. So you could see something like, oh, uh, my parents, at age 25, my parents uh, asked me to leave the house and I ended up living in my car, living in my car, right? And so let's say at age 27, you're wondering why, how is it that I got into this beautiful apartment in this beautiful house or have this particular type of life where well, you can be objective and you can look back and say, oh, 
my parents asked me to leave. Or you could be like the beta male, blue pill bitch and say, my parents kicked me out of my house. Things were so hard. I can't believe it. I hate them and I want to be a better parent than them. But I can't even find a girl because I'm traumatized from my mama's ties and I don't know what to do with myself. Right? Way too much involvement, dude. Way too much. Way too much feeling about it. Way too, too much subjectivity. So I don't know if I'm giving... Listen, I'm not giving you an answer to your question. I'm giving you a strategy to begin perceiving and noticing your life from that way with that raw material you can look back and you can see how i got where i am and i can make better choices you understand so let's let me see if i can give you a little bit more here you know you, you started jujitsu you quit you started school you quit uh you feel bad about yourself as a result you may even look at that and become objective about it. Like you, you were very objective in explaining to me those two facts and everything else around it. Like my life is crumbling and falling apart and I feel bad about it. That's all subjective shit. Just ignore it. It's useless. But the fact that I started jujitsu and I quit. I started a master's degree and I quit. Now, those are two, those are two objective signposts. Those are two very important things to just notice. Hmm, I start something, I have a tendency to quit. Let me tell you something about old Uncle E. I, ha I long had a habit of starting things and I quit, right? Starting things and I quit. And when I was younger, I used to have excuses. Well, the reason why, or because, or I just wasn't. I always had an excuse when I was younger, about why I would quit certain things. I almost quit some of the most important things in my life, and I've, I have quit some of the most important things in my life, right? I've made those mistakes, but as I've grown up, I just, I start to notice rather than feel about it. And then I say, okay, now that I know that I have a propensity towards quitting something that I start, I'm gonna make sure that the next time I start something that I absolutely 100% do not quit it. In other words, I'm not gonna start any, anything until I see it through. I've started so many different things and you guys have even seen me start certain things that I do not finish. I was not gonna start this King Transformation program. I was resistant to starting this two years ago. But I said to myself, the only way I'm gonna do this is if I'm gonna do it to the end. And here we are two years later, and I have no intention of changing or quitting, right? If anything, I just, want to, uh, I just want to leverage it a little bit better. But in fact, it's fully leveraged. I just show up here and I work with you guys. Anyway, my point is that I've seen this pattern in myself, this, this start something and quit pattern. Being subjective about it, I'll feel bad about myself. I want to beat myself up. I'm going to judge myself. Or I'll blame somebody else. Being objective about it, I say, hmm, there's a pattern here. I notice. I notice. Ah, this is a trick. I, like, I've seen things happen in my life before where like, I didn't know they were a trap. I didn't know they were a trick because I was too subjective, too emotional, too uh, wanting to validate my decision. And, I, and I, it kept me stuck in that cycle. But as I've grown in wisdom and I pull back and I say, okay, I see this happen. All right. I see it happen a second time. Huh? And then when the third, third time comes about, I go, ah, 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 ah. That's a trap. I know this one. Let me actually tell you, I, there's one that I'm thinking of in particular. $100,000 in debt. Have you ever heard Elliot Hall say, uh, especially when I was teaching my non-job stuff, I started out $100,000 in debt. It was so funny. So I started out $100,000 in debt, credit card debt because I was building my business. I was starting my family and I was a lot of debt. I paid off the debt. Then when things started getting good again, guess what old Uncle E did? He got into $100,000 debt again, exactly $100,000 again, a second time, except I did it like that because I bought a huge solar panel array for my house, right? Consumer debt, right? So I got out of $100,000 debt. Then one day Satan tempted me and said, hey, you wanna get back into $100,000 debt? And I said, let's do it. I paid that one off, it took me a long time and I spent a lot of money getting, getting out of that and I was happy and I was grateful. By the time I moved to this house, I was offered another opportunity to get into a hundred, just about a hundred thousand dollars debt again. And I watched it come. I saw it coming and I was like, I know this test. I know this trap. 
I know this. I ain't doing it this time. I'm not doing it. And it was literally like, hey, just sign here, Elliot, and we'll give you. And, you know, I was, was going to do a big upgrade on the house. Rather than just paying little by little out of pocket, it was like there was this company that wanted to come in and just upgrade all this stuff for me. And it was great. It was awesome. But it was like God was showing me, hey, E, you want to do this again? And I was like, no, I know where this is taking me, and I'm not doing it again. Guess what? I broke a cycle. You can break a cycle too, but the only way you can break a cycle is if you notice the cycle. So just notice where you are, notice what's going on, notice the season in your life, notice when this tide is in and it's time to take your boat and when the time is, the tide is out and it's time to sit and wait. Right now the tide is out, it's time to sit and wait. Guarantee, if you're objective, the tide's gonna come in and we'll say get on your boat and you get to go. Then you look back and you say, wow, good thing I have this journal that showed me everything that happened from an objective standpoint that allowed my life to be what it is. Good practice to begin and something that I think will help you. I uh, hope our conversation was useful to you, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you wanna join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting, done.